Welcome to another adventure with Journey Beyond Overland. Now that our Gladiator has her 37-inch tires, we're headed back to Kentucky to explore the new southwest expansion of the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. So if you enjoy driving through forests, across rivers, or even through old limestone mines, come along for the ride as we enjoy all that the backcountry of Kentucky has to offer. This is my least favorite part of every backcountry adventure driving through all those cities until we can finally enjoy the country. This time, Bill headed out before me to get a campsite. But on my way down after work that day, I ended up in a four vehicle accident on a Kentucky freeway where two vehicles were immobilized and emergency squads were called. Luckily, the Gladiator was virtually unscathed and I found myself that next morning in camp with Bill, Rowdy and Ashley, listening to the bacon sizzling on the skillet. The S Tree campground where we stayed has 20 first come, first served campsites and is right along the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. As you can tell from the video, the roads in this particular area are generally groomed in easy, forest service gravel roads. And if you know anything about the Kentucky Adventure Tour, this section ought to look pretty familiar because this section is also part of the cat. This bridge makes me just a little nervous driving over it. It's plenty wide, so it's not that. But can you see those sideboards shaking? The entire bridge shakes when you drive over it. And the river below, it's gotta be at least 40 feet down. Driving this is definitely part of the adventure. Throughout after the bridge travels on graded gravel roads, paved roads, and then back to gravel again. But none of the roads so far had caused us to stop and air down. Bill and I knew that soon, that was likely to change. And hopefully that change would also mean we could see how these 37-inch tires without other modifications could handle obstacles on the trail. Would they rub on the fenders while I was driving? Or even worse, would they damage those fenders or even cause them to break while I was going over obstacles? The only way we'd ever know is to just keep driving. Once you reach Wildcat Road in this timbered area with a nice soft and sandy trail, when you get closer and closer to these woods, this is exactly where you need to stop and air down. Ah, there you go. I don't know why it does that sometimes. This trip was the first time we'd used our new Morflate inflation and deflation system. This four tire system, it's so fast, we're gonna be spoiled from here on out. Once all three vehicles were aired down, we were ready to venture into the woods. There are two trails here, one to the right that's a little bit easier track, and this one to the left, which is a little more challenging. Both trails join back up at the top of this first hill. Unfortunately, I don't have video of any vehicle driving up this, but as you can see, it's a little bit steep and a little bit narrow, and you should watch out for the route on the left right here. Before we drove this, I placed an action camera on my front bumper, but when I reached the top, it was gone. So I walked back down that hill in search of my camera. What is this? Oh, would you like this? And wouldn't you know it, it fell off all the way down at the bottom. Yeah, it's right there, right at the bottom of the hill. So it got nothing. Let's see if somebody ran over it. No, nope, it's probably still running. It doesn't look real happy, whatever's going on. Hey, it's still running. I think I'll turn it off. The Wildcat Road portion of this trail is exactly the kind of trail we like driving. Scenic, with mud holes and rock obstacles, just a little bit of a challenge as you enjoy driving through the beautiful woodlands. But because we'd driven this section before, I didn't take a lot of video. So if you want to see more about this particular trail, check out the link in the description. Are you really wanting to go down that? <laughs> you probably could have. So, yes, you did. This section of the trail also ends with a beautiful but sometimes very deep crossing of the Rock Castle River. 
Now this happened to be only the second day that I'd driven off-road on something other than a gravel forest service road. So this river crossing, this was pretty darn intimidating to me. Both Bill and Rowdy encouraged me that this wasn't going to be a big issue. All I had to do was keep a nice, slow, steady speed, go straight forward, and don't stop. Well, that didn't work very well. Because right now, I'm slamming on that pedal. Did I flood my engine? Has something gone wrong? I can't move. But I could move backwards. And then I just had to start laughing at myself. Because somewhere along the way, I had shifted that foot over to the brake pedal. No wonder she had no interest in driving through the rest of that river with me hitting on the brake. Thankfully, the river that day wasn't too deep, and I caused no damage to my vehicle. But chalk this one up to a lesson learned. It's not a mistake I'm likely to repeat again. After you leave this exquisite river crossing behind, the Kentucky Adventure Tour turns left on the next major road. But today, today we were headed right into unknown territory. After driving along some easy and scenic roads, we found ourselves on the Mullen Station Road. And if you look carefully, you too can find this beautiful spot for lunch on the Round Stone Creek. As peaceful and calming as this river was for lunch, I just couldn't wait to get going because this is where I really wanted to go and explore. This is the Mullen Station Limestone Quarry. This limestone quarry operated from 1897 until 1979. It is a very worthwhile place to stop and explore. Where else can you drive along avenues chiseled straight into the rock while the towering 80-foot walls loom above you? While the four of us were exploring the tunnels in the mine that day, we were all suddenly startled by the sound of gunfire outside. But if that happens to you, don't panic. Locals often still use this particular area for target practice. When we came out of the mine that day, the gentleman who had been target shooting apologized profusely to me. He had no idea we were still in the mine. Except for the Wildcat Road portion, today's trail had been pretty much gravel, but that was about to change again. This particular part of the track is narrow. I mean really narrow. And there's actually a drop of several feet off on both sides of this road, but it was really hard to get a good camera angle to show it, especially with all the poison ivy in the area. For anybody who might be keeping track, I didn't drive either of the Jeeps over this narrow section. My excuse? Well, somebody had to fly the drone, right? And Bill also wanted to know how those 37s felt on the Gladiator. After you leave that narrow section behind, expect to immediately encounter a fun section of rock obstacles. And if you're looking in that driver window, you're right, I'm not driving either of the Jeeps through this section either, but I did get some pretty good film. And if you're curious how those 37-inch tires handled this without a leveling kit, a lift, or parting of fenders, 
There was no rubbing or any other problems on these minor obstacles. When you're driving along those trails in the tight woods, it's really hard to get the big picture above you. But once we found this particular area, you can view all the way out into the distance, the forested wilderness that is Appalachian, Kentucky. The majority of the roads we drove that day on the new southwest expansion of the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway they're easy gravel, graded, or paved roads with just those two small sections with some technical rock obstacles and mud holes. But the expansion is still a worthwhile place to explore with several points of interest along the way, including our last stop of the day at Anglin Falls. It's a moderate two-mile round-trip hike up to the falls and back, but I'd say it's worth it. The falls are especially nice when you've been driving on dusty roads in 90 degree weather all day and the cold water is just perfect. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on our travel on the new expansion of the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. And next time when you come back, this is what we're getting into. This trail has a lot more than just a couple minor obstacles and mud holes. So if you really want to know how those 37s without a leveling kit, lift, or parting of fenders do, come on back and find out. Oh, and I'm actually going to have to drive through these. At least I get to end that day with something I'm more familiar with, a little spelunking. So come on back next time when we take on the challenge of Ross Creek, Pistol Creek, and the Caves of War Creek. But in the meantime, go out and find your own adventure.